let's continue to discuss data transformation with the deep layer package. Column verbs operate on the columns of data frames or tables. So they work on one or more columns of your data frame or table. One of the most important tasks um, that one can perform to columns is to compute new quantities. For example, in the flights data set, we have the distance flown and the airtime. From this, we may want to compute the speed of the uh, plane in miles per hour. And perhaps we could do a statistical analysis. Similarly, one may be interested in calculating the gain, time gained, if any, by a flight. And we may want to uh, compute the difference between the departure delay and the arrival delay. And if the departure delay is greater than the arrival delay, it means that the flight was able to gain some time, make up some of the delay uh, in transit. The verb for adding new columns that compute new quantities based on existing columns is known as mutate. And what we can do is we can take the flights table and pipe it to mutate and we could add a new column called gain, which would be departure delay minus arrival delay. And a second column called speed, which would take the distance and divide it by um, the airtime. But this airtime is in minutes, therefore if we wanted speed miles per hour, we should multiply uh, the uh, this, this speed by 60 because this is speed per minute. And then we can pipe this to glimpse to have a look at um, what this data transformation has done. And now we see that two new columns have been added. One is for gain, um, you know, and it's a negative, and these negative numbers indicates that time has been lost, that the arrival delay is longer uh, than the uh, departure delay, and positive numbers indicate that time has been gained, where uh, the arrival delay is shorter than the departure delay. Um, and then there's a column called speed, which is the speed in miles per hour. And it's like 370, 400, 500 miles an hour, which is about the speed of uh, commercial airlines. Um, now, in this case, the two columns have been added to the very end of the table. We can control the location of where these columns are added using the before or after um, uh, uh, arguments to the mutate function. So we could do this several different ways. We could say before eight, and that means it'll go before column number eight. If you run this, now our gain and speed are before scheduled arrival time, and that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they're after the seventh column. In other words, they're before the eighth column. We could also, um, instead of giving a column number, we could give the name of a variable or a column. So for example, we could say, put them before airtime. And when we do that, our two new columns for gain and speed have been put before the airtime column. Similar to before, there's after, and it works the same way. We can say after distance, for instance, and gain and speed are now 
after the distance column. A second set of um, <clears throat> column verbs have to do with organizing the table. Sometimes uh, data sets may have hundreds or thousands of variables and it can be a challenge even to initially um, explore what the data set is about. In such situations, one can use the select verb to uh, subset columns, just like filter subsets rows, select subsets columns. We could, for example, select just the origin and departure delay columns. So we would take the flight table and pipe it to select and say origin and departure delay. And when we pipe this to glimpse, we see the resulting table has only two columns, the origin and departure delay. It's also possible to select a range of columns. So let's say we wanted to select the uh, columns going from year to day. So we can use the colon notation as you would do with numerical indexing of rows or columns. But in this case, we're giving column names. And when we do this, we have selected the columns from um, year to day. Um, you can invert the selection using the not operator. So if I say not, what this will do is it will select everything except the columns from year to day. Let's see if this works. Indeed, it works. We're missing the first three columns, year, month, and day, and all the other columns are present. We have 16 instead of 19 columns. It's also possible to select columns based on what type, the data type of uh, that column. So we could say, select where is dot character. And um, is dot character um, um, is uh, returns true if the variable is um, uh, is is of uh, type character. And now it has returned only four columns, uh, carrier, tail num, origin, and a destination, uh, which are the only character columns. All the others are numeric columns. Another useful function um, or verb is uh, in order to organize columns is to rename. Sometimes we would like to change the name of a column. So let's say we want to rename tail num to tail underscore num. We will say rename tail underscore num equals tail num. And when we do this, our tail num column has been renamed to tail underscore num. And finally, um, um, another useful uh, verb is relocate, which changes the location of columns. So for example, we wanted to relocate um, the time hour column. If you simply say relocate without specifying any positions, then this time hour column has been moved uh, from the very end of the table to the very starting. So without arguments, relocate will put the column or the variable at the front of the table. But just like with mutate, 
we can use the dot before um, argument or dot, dot after argument to move it to a before or after a named column or a given position. So let's say we wanted to put time hour before airtime. We can use the dot before argument and now time hour has been placed before airtime. We can also take a range of columns. So if you wanted to um, move all the columns containing flight time information from airtime to time hour to the position before carrier, uh, the carrier, what we would do is we would take the range of the columns from airtime to time hour and move this set of columns to the position before carrier. And indeed, if we look before a carrier, we have time hour, minute hour, distance, and airtime. That set of five columns has been moved from the end of the table to before the carrier column.